Hello church, um, let me just shut my music off here, let me see if I can see some comments, I can see people are commenting, let me take a look, but hello, good evening everybody, I hope everybody's doing well, hello James and Anthony, Sandy, uh, Danica, hello Millie Corbett, hello nice to see you, Dolores McCracken, Christine out in Colorado, hello. Orville, hello Orville, Sandy Whitney, um, well, she's looking for prayer for John Eastwood, so we will be praying, we will pray for John, if we could I'll just pray for John Eastwood, he's gonna, he's got pneumonia, okay, so we'll be praying for him, um, 
Roseanne, good to see you. Miss you on Sunday. I didn't, well, I didn't see you anyways. Uh, Michael Deschardin, my brother. Eva, hello. Matthew Rogers, out in Florida. Oh, yeah, it's warm down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't too bad up here either. Um, let's see who else we got on here. That's all I see. Uh, Pauline, hello. And Lorinda. I see Lorinda on there also. So, um, I got my guitar with me because I am going to play a song. Um, it's a song that the Lord had put on my heart. And um, I've been playing it down the cafe for a couple of weeks now, and it's uh, really been speaking to me. I've been pr playing mainly the chorus down there, but I might I might play through the whole song tonight. I'll let the Holy Spirit uh, lead me. Hello, Pam. Good to see you on there. Cassandra. Nice to see you, Cassandra. Hope you and Kenny are doing well. <clears throat> um, but um, I'm going to open up in prayer. Um, uh, as you know, I'm Pastor Bill. I'm the associate pastor here at New Life. And Pastor Rick and Pamela are down in New York uh, visiting with his mom, which um, which is um, definitely something they've been waiting and trying to do now for a couple of months, actually. And um, so th this, um, I, I hope they have a blessed time. I hope um, everything goes well down there. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I just want, let's, let's just pray. And we'll pray for John Eastwood. But you know what? There's a praise report, too. Bethany Nadu came home today. So that is a pra um, that is a praise report. It says I'm breaking up. Um, well, hopefully that will sl that will get better. <laughs> I hope. Um, hopefully it won't be breaking up too much. Hi Rob, how are you, Rob? Good to see you. Um, hopefully the Wi-Fi will stay good. I should be on the correct Wi-Fi, which is um, it's just me. I, I think I should be okay. Hello, Edna. You're home. That's good to see. You had your surgery today, which we prayed for you earlier. While you were in surgery, we were praying for you. That's good. That's good. So Edna's home, and that's a good. That's good news. And um, so I'm just gonna pray, and then, like I said, Bethany should be home, and um, pray for that. We'll pray for um, Joanne Feldman. Very choppy. Uh, well, I am. Um, I don't know. Let me see if I'm on the right Wi-Fi. I am. I'm on the the Comcast. So, should, uh, oh, oh, connected. Okay. I just uh, let's see. It should be good. Okay, it's restored. Let me see if it's better. I don't know, but I will do my best. I hope it ain't too choppy. Um, I mean, it is on the uh, my strongest Wi-Fi at the house, so. But let's pray. Lord, I just pray right now, Lord. I thank you, first of all, Lord Jesus, just for being with us. I thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your love. I thank you for bringing Bethany home, Lord Jesus. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for Edna's surgery today. I thank you that she is doing, uh, she is home. She is resting, Lord. I just pray for a quick recovery for her. I also pray for the same for Bethany, Lord, that you will just be with her. Lord Jesus, I just pray you be with her, Lord. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, right now, Lord Jesus, um, also for Joanne, Lord Feldman, Lord, I just pray, Lord, you continue the healing for her, continue the answers for her, Lord, give them wisdom, give them guidance, Lord, be with them, Lord Jesus. I pray for John Eastwood right now with pneumonia, Lord. I pray right now, Lord, you for your healing touch and your protection over him, Lord. I thank you for him, Lord. I pray for Pastor Rick and Pamela down in New York, Lord. I pray your blessings over them. I pray for rest over them. I pray for peace over them and, and, and a time of, um, of uh, family time, Lord. I pray that right now, Lord. And um, I just pray for tonight, Lord, that you will just speak what you want to speak and do what you want to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, John, you're on here. I can see you, John. I can see you, John. So the song I'm going to sing is uh, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. But it's not the usual one you would hear. It's, um, it's actually from Passion. And it was put on my heart a couple, you know, because... The song talks about what it's really about. So um, I'm just going to play it, and uh, you can join along, or you, you know, or you can just close your eyes and allow it to minister to you. Mm -hmm. 
It's all about you Jesus And all this is for you For your glory and your fame It's not about me As if you should do things my way you alone I got and I surrender to your way. Jesus, lover of my soul, all-consuming fire is your gaze Jesus I want you to know I will follow you all of my days No one else in history is like you and history itself belongs to you Alpha and Omega you have loved me and all I will share eternity it's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you, and your glory and your fame, it's not about me, as if you should do things my way. You alone I got and I surrender to your ways. I surrender to your ways. It's all about you. And all this is for you, for your glory and your fame. It's not about me, as if you should do things my way. You alone are God, and I surrender. To your ways. Thank you, Jesus. I surrender to your ways. It's not about me. It's all about you. It's about your flame and about your about your fame and your glory, Lord. You alone are God, Lord. You you don't need to do things my way. You need to do we need to do things your way, Lord. I thank you for that. All right. Well, I hope people can hear me a little bit better. I know some people said I was choppy, but others are saying it sounds good. And um, but um, <clears throat> I'm going to be in a, a couple of scriptures tonight. Um, and um, just so uh, everybody knows, I'll make a couple of announcements now before I get into it. Is that we will be having a men's Zoom meeting tomorrow night, and it will be um, on Zoom, um, and that's for men at seven o'clock. And um, I know Anthony will be speaking. And then there will be an in-house um, sisterhood meeting on Friday. And that is in-house at the, at the church. So that would be good. And then, um, you know, and then we have our normal Sunday that I, that I know of. 
Um, and it's also going to be, I'm pretty sure, not positive, but um, maybe Edna can write on here, that there is going to be a Bible study on Saturday. If somebody could um, can confirm that, I'm pretty sure there's a Bible study on Saturday morning for um, senior ministry, for salt ministry. So those of you who are over 55, um, that you know, there's going to be a Bible study on Saturday morning, I'm pretty sure, with uh, Edna Unger. So um, um, hopefully she will comment on that. And I'm, hopefully it's still happening. I'm not positive. But there's a couple of scriptures. Um, you know, I was in my um, Bible study yesterday, and um, one scripture really stuck out to me. And uh, that led me down to other scriptures. And um, that's what I'm going to do tonight. I don't, um, Pastor doesn't like me to um, kind of, you know, he, he's been doing the Romans, so he will stay with doing the Romans. And, um, but um, when, when, I, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm here teaching, I, I seek the Lord. And I go with the Lord's, wherever he prompts me to go, whatever he wants me to teach, I teach. And uh, Good to see you on here, Gary. Um, I see you there. From the road again, he says. <laughs> and um, I'm glad you like the song also, but, uh, brother. But um, yeah, that was a... Um, uh, James, um, everybody else sounds good. I don't know, James, if it's me or if it's what it is, but... Jerry Ellis. You're at my house, Jerry, tonight. <laughs> Jerry, you're at my house tonight. Am I in the right place, he says. He's at my house tonight. So, um, but um, I don't know, James. I, I mean, everybody else says it's okay. It's okay, but but I'm sorry. Um, but I'm going to be starting in Mark 7. And um, I'm going to reading, I'm re be reading Mark 7, verses 1 to 13. And then I'm going to be I'm also going to, uh, I'll be going into Luke, Luke 10. And I'll be also, and I'll be closing with um, in Mark 5, I mean in uh, Matthew 5. But I wanted to start here. And um, I, I'll read it and then I'll, we'll kind of break it down. And um, just, just, just share what the Lord has put in my heart. And um, there's a few things I thought were very important. So um, in Mark 7, starting in verse 1, I'm going to be reading 1 to 13. So it says, The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial cleaning, washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pictures, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders, instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as is, as it is written. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, honor your, mother, your, your, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corbain, that is devoted to God, then you no longer let you no no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. This thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. So you know that's a um, that's a pretty strong point that Jesus was making, talking to the Pharisees. 
But you know, when I read this, I had to, I read it a few times, and, and what, one thing that stuck out with me was about traditions. And I think sometimes myself and many people can get caught on traditions or caught on things, um, maybe rules or things maybe in this world or things from the world that we bring into the church sometimes or bring into our fellowship. And we get a, and, I, and for myself, I need to realize what's most important. What is most important? And as Jesus was pointing out here, how, how important that the law is more important, meaning not the law, but, the, but well, yeah, the law is more important than human tradition. And I will share, I will get into that a little bit more as I go on. But the first thing you see here in Mark um, 7, 1 is that, that they came, that these, these teachers or these Pharisees, the Pharisees, they came to investigate the one they called the Galilean. They wanted to see what he was doing, what his activities were. They were checking up on him, and they want they you know, and they wanted they they wanted to find something wrong with him. So right away was they were going there to find something wrong, which is something else that we can see sometimes in the church is that people are always looking for something wrong. Sometimes they're looking for the wrong things instead of just you know instead of worshiping God and honoring God in all we do. And then you see in, in, in chapter seven, verses two and three, you see. The ceremonial washing was a tradition of the elders. And to them, it was binding. That was a binding tradition, meaning that you had to do that. But Jesus was stating here, is you know what? The law is more important than that. Loving people is more important than that. Loving people is more important than that. Loving and, 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 and the things of God are more important than that. And then in seven four you see the Jews. The thing is, is that they um, when they came from a marketplace, especially when they came from a marketplace, there was a reason for the ceremonial cleaning because they believed that when you went to the marketplace, there was a lot of Gentiles around there. So they saw the Gentiles as dirty, as filthy, as defiled, and that's why they had to clean. That was especially the reason why they had that on their hearts. But see, Jesus didn't see that. Jesus, uh, Jesus was here to get rid of that. That's what he was here to destroy, was these things, these traditions, these rules, these laws. But I think sometimes today we even get caught up in some of these laws and some of these rules. But so, and it wasn't just the Gentiles, but it was also Jews that did not, um, did not um, follow their ways. So they considered them as defiled, and if they came from the marketplace, that they should be ceremonially cleaning. But Jesus saying that was not important. That was not important. And they, but in 7 5, you see that they questioned Jesus. If you look in 7 5, he says, they questioned him about why don't your disciples do this and follow the traditions which they're supposed to. And as you can see, when Jesus here, when he heard that, he, right away he knew. And he had the word of God in him. And he, you know, he quoted Isaiah, denouncing the religious leaders of his day. And Jesus also. also does here, tradition of the elders are merely human rules. Sometimes we get caught up with human rules, and I think it's more important that we get caught up with God's, with, with, with the Spirit of God and His rule, His rules, and which we will get into. What are His rules? What are His laws today for us? What are His rules and His laws today for us? And then if you look in 7 8, it says, you have let go of the commandments of God and are holding on to human traditions. This is so important. The commandments of God. This is the New Testament, and he's talking about you have let go of the commandments of God. See, the commandments of God are still for us, but they obviously were fulfilled. How were they fulfilled? Through Jesus. If we follow Jesus, we will follow the law. We will obey the commands. And, and we will get a little bit into that. But he's saying here is that you're holding on to human tradition. And you're, you're putting that. But, you, but we need to put the, the law and the, the, you know, the, the Jesus trumps that. He comes above that. Je Jesus in 7, 8 clearly contrasts the two. It's the commands of God and the human tradition. So the commands of God has to come above human tradition, always. It has to. The commands of God have to come above human tradition. 
Traditions of the, traditions of the elders are not binding, are not, not even biblical. They're not even biblical. And before, there is no authoritative binding behind them. They're not biblical, and there's no authoritative binding behind them. And then you look in that verse, um, verse 10. <clears throat> Jesus cites the fifth commandment in its positive ways and its negative ways. For Moses said, honor your father and mother. And anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. So right here, Jesus is stating, you know, what we need to follow these. We need to honor our parents. We need to honor our mother and father. But he also, in verse 11 and 12, he gets into a, a something else that was a tradition for them back then, which was Corbin, which is a Hebrew or Aramaic word meaning offering. So what was happening is that they were they were taking and they were giving money to the church or giving money somewhere so that they wouldn't have to take on of their parents or take care of their parents. So that they didn't have to follow the law. They thought, oh, if we just pay in, we won't have to follow the law. And that was a human rule that they had place in, they put in place. So they wouldn't have to follow God's law. But the truth of the matter is, they should have been following God's law because it comes above that human tradition that they had formed themselves. And they were just looking to pay their way out of following the law. And again, the teachers of the Lord held that Corbine was binding. Again, they said this is, they believed it was binding. But as Jesus points out, it is not. And it breaks the devotion of God. It breaks the devotion of God. And that's what it is, you know, because all of a sudden, what they're saying that, oh, if I just pay this, you know what, that law don't matter. God doesn't, God's law doesn't matter. But God's law does matter. Our obedience does matter. And, and then in verse 13, he says, Jesus rejects taking tradition over the word of God. He says, thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like this. Nullifying, making it, making it, taking away its authority, taking away its power, nullifying it. How important is that we stick to the Word of God? The Word of God is, is everything. The Word of God is where our answers are. The Word of God trumps all, our, all these things that we hear today in this world. The Word of God. And it's important that we realize that. You know, and this led me to look into the Ten Commandments. You know, um, um, we, we know what the Ten Commandments are. They are in Exodus 20. And it says, the first commandment says to have no other gods. Second one says, shall not make idols. The third one says, don't use the Lord's name in vain. Fourth one says, remember the Sabbath, to remember that day of rest. Fifth one says, honor your mother and your father. Then six is don't murder, don't commit adultery, do not steal. Do not give false witness to, to your neighbor and do not covet your neighbors. So you see these Ten Commandments that, in, that we are still, that, that we should still follow, but we do it through following Christ. We do it through what Christ told us to do. And, that, and that's going to lead to my next scripture. My next scripture is Luke 10. And then in Luke 10, starting in verse 25 to 37. And I chose Luke for a reason. Because this, this is in, um, um, in three of the Gospels, but I chose Luke for a reason. And, I, and <clears throat> yeah, hopefully um, I don't go too fast because I want to make sure that I have enough time, but, I'm, but I should be good. But I'm, um, Luke 10... Um, 25 to 37. And here again, we see the scholars testing Jesus. And it says in uh, Luke 10, starting in verse 25, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
What is written in the law? He replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength and with all of your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. I'm going to stop there real quick because I think that's very important right now. See, this is the law that we need to follow. This trumps over everything. So we need to love the Lord with all of our heart, which is the main source of us, our center, who we are. It's what we should be passionate about is loving the Lord. That's what we should be focused on. Our heart should, we should constantly be thinking of the Lord. That should be our heart. Our heart should beat like his heart beats. All of our soul, which is our spiritual self, should be for the Lord. All of our strength, everything we do, all of our strength, everything we should do should be for the kingdom. And all of our mind, our intellect should be devoted to God. We should, we should be focused on these things. That should be our devotion. See, the significance is that a total devotion is not even just asked, but it's demanded. It is a command. This is a command for us, is to love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your strength, and all of your mind. Well, then the, the, the teacher of the law thinks, he can, thinks he's got a question and he can stump Jesus. So he says, you have answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And that is the question, who is our neighbor? Because it says to love our neighbor. Everybody is our neighbor. Whoever we come into contact with is our neighbor. And, and, and he makes that, he puts that into a parable here, um, or a story, in, um, in, in the Good Samaritan that we will um, go through right now. He says, In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to the hem and bandaged his wounds, pouring an oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you have. Which of, these th which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So you can see here, the people that are supposed to love, be filled with love, are supposed to follow the law, are supposed to love God with all of their heart, all of their soul, and all of their strength in their mind, were the ones that were made example here of not doing what they were called to do. You have the priest. He should have been loving, but he passed by on the other side of the street. And then you have the Levite, the layman, he should have also been loving and, and knew the law and knew about honoring God and loving your neighbor. But he also passed by on the other side. But then you have the Samaritan, the one who was hated by Jews, and the feelings were mutual. They did not like each other. He was considered a half-breed, physically and spiritually. 
He had open, they had open hostility towards each other. But he had compassion. He had compassion on this man. And that's what we're called to have is compassion no matter what. We are called to have compassion on everybody and on people. We are called to love. We are called to love God. And then we are, and, 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 and as we love God, also love others. And that includes everybody. We need to love everybody. Now, that might look different for, for, in different ways, but that is what we are called to do. Now, as you see in the scripture, it shows that he, that, he, that he went to this man, he bandaged him up, he put oil on him and wine, which means there was healing. This was for healing. He was helping, trying to help him to heal. And he also gave two denarii to the hotel manager. Now, two, that, two denarii is two days of wages. This is two days of this guy's work. So I want you to think about the amount of money you make at work or whatever and think about how much money that really was. And back in those days, it, it says, you know, from what I studied, it says that that would, kept, that, that would keep the man in the inn for two months, for a long period of time to heal up. He didn't just have a little compassion on him. He had a lot of compassion on him. And then Jesus asked the real question. So who do you expect? The real question was that who is the one? What is, what is right? Which of these men uh, was the neighbor? Was the one who had mercy on him? The one who had compassion on him? We need to have mercy and compassion on everybody. Even if they don't line up with us. People are not always going to line up with us. They're not always going to agree with us. They're not always going to have the same thinking as we do. But we are called to love God and to love others. And that is a command. That is the, the, if we follow those two commands, that if we love the Lord with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength, and if we love our neighbor, we will follow the Ten Commandments, will we not? If you look at the Ten Commandments, they have to do with what? They have to do with honoring God, and they have to do with tr the way we treat people. So those, are, this is what's most important. This trumps over everything. This comes above everything. This comes above our po political positions. This comes above the laws of the land. This comes above the beliefs of the land. The, the word of God trumps it all. You know, if we want people to change, it's going to come through the word of God. It's not going to come through what we believe in and what we stand for. It's going to come through the Holy Spirit and the word of God. It's, the word of God is what's going to change somebody. It's the conviction by the Holy Spirit that's going to change somebody. It's not going to always be... Um, uh, oh, oh, that's well, that's tradition. No, we can't, we can't change. No, it's going to come through the Word of God. It's going to come through being, staying with the Word of God. How important that is, you know. And uh, you know, sometimes I think for for me and for all of us that we need to realize how important it is to love people, and how important it is that we have good reputations and that and that we do our best to love everybody. And, and, if, and, and if somebody has, has a wrong against us, or we have a wrong against somebody, that we need to make it right. I think it's so important. You know, and, and I wanted to share a story, because I remember being saved for a couple of years. And the Lord put on my heart about um, a, a situation in my life that I had to deal with. And it was so important. I've shared this story before. Some people probably have heard it, but... I had I had to um, I had a daughter who I hadn't seen since she was three years old, and I, at the point at that point she was about um, sixteen. And uh, the Lord had put on my heart that um, you need to make that right, because it, it, how important it was that God wants us to make things right no matter what. If there's any hard feelings, if there's anything that anything that's that's not taken care of, we need to take care of it. 
And I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget writing that letter to my daughter and um, restoring that relationship, which we have a very good relationship today. But that's because of God. And one thing God has taught me is that we need to keep peace with each other, no matter what. We need to love each other. We need to go out of way for each other. If, if somebody has a need, we shouldn't just pray for them. We need to help them. We need to, love is, this, this love that we have is an action. This is an action that we need to put into action. And you know, there's many ways we can do that. You know, it's one thing I've learned is that so many times, love can be inconvenient. Love can be inconvenient at times. There's need sometimes where we will have to sacrifice to, to help somebody to, to fill a need. We'll have to go out of our way. We'll have to take that extra step like the Samaritan did here. With an enemy. With an enemy. Not even a friend. Not even a, um, a fellow Samaritan. But an en and back then would be considered an enemy. But you know what? The Word of God trumps that. Our love and our compassion needs to trump that. No matter what the differences are. You know, we need our, our law and our heart. It says in the Word that the law should be written on our hearts. Meaning these Ten Commandments. Meaning this right here. Love the Lord with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul. And, 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 and to love your neighbor. And your neighbor is everybody. We need to love everybody as much as we can. You know, and um, how important and how hard sometimes that can be. And to love our and to love our um, our neighbor. You know, we had a discipleship class today. Thank you, Bill Unger. Um, another excellent class. And um, how important. Um, I mean, I'm blessed every day by that by that class. And, uh, every, you know, every week I'm blessed by it. It's uh, really been a blessing to me, the discipleship class that we do during the day on Wednesdays. But today we were talking about loving our enemies. That's when it really, you know what, it's easy to love people that are friends or people that you know and people that are, they like you and you like. But how about loving somebody that doesn't like you or you don't like? How hard is that? And I wanted, you know, I also wanted to turn there, which, um, which is going to be in Matthew 5. Matthew 5. There was another, word, another scripture I wanted to use. I'm just looking to see where I put it. I don't think I wrote it down. Well, we'll have to look at it after. Or I know I wrote it somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Okay. There is one other scripture. Before we go there... I want to look at another scripture before we go to Matthew 5. I want to look at, um, you know, this law that, that, that God is talking about, James calls it the royal law. And that's what I wanted to look at. I wanted to look at James 2, verses 8 through 11. He calls it the royal law. James 2, verses 8 through 11. What it says is that if you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said... You shall not commit adultery. Also said, you should not murder. If you should not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. But the thing that really got me here was the favoritism that, you know what? We're not to show favoritism to people. People we like better than other people. We're not to show favoritism. You know, one thing I learned very early, especially as a Christian, is uh, ab about that, about showing favoritism. And um, I'll never forget my son playing football. And um, hold on one second. My, for some reason, my 
<laughs> my, my, my music went on. My son playing football, and I was his football coach. And I coached him for uh, many years, and I coached a lot of his friends. And I'll be honest with you, one thing that I always did was I didn't show favoritism to him. I didn't treat him any better than any of the other kids. And you know what? Those kids, I loved those kids. Those kids loved me, and I treated them like my own kids. I didn't show favoritism. And I learned that about favoritism. And I'll never forget one year my son's like, oh, I'm not going to play this year. I said, okay. Well, I'm still coaching, I said. And I coach. And I'll never forget my son coming afterwards. But you know what? It, um, it taught me, though, about favoritism. It taught me that, you know what? There is no favoritism. God, God shows favoritism, uh, does what he wants to do. If he wants to show favor to some, somebody, he will. And it's not always going to be the Christian. It's going to be sometimes going to be a worldly person. And you'd be surprised. And that's why, you know, that's why I wanted to read that before we go to Matthew, um, Matthew 5. Because I think that, that's shown in this scripture that we read today. So I'm going to Matthew 5. Um, verses 43 to 48. Which talks about loving your enemies. It says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward Will you get? Are uh, not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. You know, going through that always brings a, always going to bring a conviction to us. I I know it does for me. Because I, I have to, something I had to learn was to love my enemies and love people that don't like me. You know, and um, that story of my daughter and my, having my daughter in my life again. One thing that happened was that there was a lot of times that we had to deal with a lot of attacks from people. And um, a lot of people didn't like me because I wasn't there for my daughter for many years from, for whatever reason, for my addiction. You know, I know I was forgiven for that, but they didn't know that yet. And I had to learn to love them anyways. I was treated, treated wrongly many times by my own daughter and by her, you know, her mom and their family. And my family was treated wrong. But thank God for the Holy Spirit who taught me to be humble, taught me to love them anyways. And you know what? We loved, we, the love that we showed them, we, went, we, we, we broke through that. And it, it, I, there was never a, never an attack. We did not have to fight with our mouths. We did not have to fight with anger. We didn't have to fight in those ways. All we did was love them, respected them. And today we have, we, today, actually, we get along very well. There is no, we don't, we don't get attacked any longer. But it took us loving them and them seeing true love and seeing Christ in order for that to happen. Because, you know, it would have never happened if we didn't do that. We had, to be, we had to be the humble person. We had to be filled with the Holy Spirit and, and, and allow those, the, the fruit of the Spirit to show, which is love, which is patience, which is kindness, which is gentleness. No matter what. No matter what they thought of me. No matter what they said about me or my family. It doesn't matter. What matters is the what I do. And what we do as Christians, that's what matters. How we treat others is what matters, not how they treat us. Because you know what? Sometimes people are going to treat us bad. But how we react to that is what's important. And, and, and if we do have a, a problem with somebody or somebody has a problem with us, we need, it's our job to make it right. It's not their job, it's our job. I don't care if they've wronged me. I have to make it right. I have to go, go, go my, do my best to make it right and bring peace to that situation. And, 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 and cancel out 
what the enemy, cancel out what the enemy wants to do. Because that's what the problem is, is the problem is if we don't do that, the enemy has a foothold. The enemy will be used and the enemy will take advantage of that and he will use it to his advantage. But as in the scripture, as you can see, for in verse 43, it says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Well, the first thing here is that nowhere in the Old Testament does it say to hate your enemy. But that was like a rule of the community back then. That's what it was. It was, again, a human tradition. It was not said in the, old t in the word. It wasn't said to hate your enemy. God never said that. But it was a tradition that they followed. And, that, and, and, so, and so that was another thing that they, that, that they were stuck on. It was considered a, it's called a rule of the community. That's what it was called. But it was not something that God told them to do. And then in verse 44 it says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. We need to love our enemies, those who persecute us, those who accuse us, those who come against us. We need to love them. And I know, and it says pray for them. We need to love them. Sometimes we need to even go out of our way for them. Just, just because I believe that their love will trump over it. This love, this law will trump what, what's going on. It will take it, take it over. Love will bring healing. Love will bring, could, can bring restoration. Love will, love will cancel out the wrong. It will. And then verse 45, it says, That you may be children of your Father in heaven. See, that's how people know who we are. It's by our love. When we love people, and we, no matter what, when we love people, no matter what, no matter what we, they've done to us, no matter what we believe in our heart, we love them anyways. Well, they're getting the Father's love. We, we, we are children of Him, and we're children, and that, that should come out of us. The Father's love should come out of us. And then it says here, He causes His Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. So we see here that God does not show distinction. He, they see that they get sunny days just like we get sunny days. They get the rain as we get the rain. They get the blessings as we get the blessings. That, that's the unbeliever. That's the, that, that is the, the, the evil. Get, they get blessed at times. And we get blessed at times. And we suffer at times too. But we got to understand something that. that our God does not show favoritism. He doesn't. He is very impartial. There is no favoritism. He treats everybody the same. And he blesses who he wants to bless. He blesses who he wants to bless. It's not favoritism. He just blesses them. Then there's a purpose behind his blessings. And sometimes it's worldly people that are going to be blessed. And that's God's choice. There's nothing wrong with that. God's going to bless who he wants to bless. And then it goes on to say, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? That's easy. Anybody can love those who love you. But love those who don't love you or don't like you. Treat them with respect. Go out of your way for them. And you'll destroy the enemy. You will, because we're not fighting against a person. We are fighting against Satan himself. We are not fighting against people. Our, our battle is not against people. It is against Satan himself and his deceitful ways and his lies and his deception and his tricks. That is who we're fighting against. We are not fighting against people. And we need to stick with the word of God and let the word of God do its work. We have something to say. We, use, we need to do it through the word of God. I'm not even the tax collectors doing that. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and if you know the reputation of a tax collector, they were not very liked people. But they're loving the ones that love them, obviously. And if you greet only your own people, 
What are you doing more than others? To think about that. Greeting only your own people. We need to love and we need to greet everybody. No matter what we think. No matter what they believe. We believe what we believe. We believe in the Word of God. We stand on the Word of God. We represent the Word of God. We are ambassadors of the Word of God. We are ambassadors of Christ. So we are ambassadors of this Word. So what we do with this Word and how we love people is that's what's important. It's not how they treat us. It's how we treat them. It's how we treat that person that we don't like. How we treat that person who said something bad about us. It's how we treat people. And it says there that even the pagans do that. Even the pagans say hi to the people they like in their own group. We all do. But us, it's up to us to go out of our way to, to, to love people and to, and, and to recognize people. We need to go out of our way. And not just in the church. This is everywhere. Oh, just no, everywhere. This is everywhere we go, anywhere we go. If there's something that we have, if somebody has something against us, we need to do our best to make it right. We can't attack like they like. We, we might be attacked, but we cannot attack back. If we if, if our attack should be in love, that should be our attack. We should love them. We should go out of our way. Go out of our way to love them and to make it right. Even if we did nothing wrong, it's to love them. That's how we defeat Satan. That's how we shut him up, is by loving. It shuts him up. It gives him no power. It takes everything he has away. And it says here in 40, um, 48, Be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So we, it's our job to try to, for this perfection, to strive towards this perfection. And in our class today, there was five things that um, P Pastor Bill had shared with us through, through the, um, the book that we are going through, uh, Diedrich Bonhoeffer's Hoffer's, um, The Cost of Discipleship. And why should we love our enemies? And there was five reasons why, which I'll go over real quick before we close out. But it says that God makes, first thing is that God makes no distinction. He doesn't see us any different. He loves all people. He loves everybody. He loves the sinner. And he loves the one who was saved, who was a sinner. Second thing is Jesus died for the ungodly as we once were. He died for the ungodly just like he did for us. And we once were the ungodly. We cannot forget that. We need to realize how important it is that we remember where we were. And some of the things that we used to do. That we've been forgiven for. Third thing is that people without Christ have needs just like we do. People without Christ have needs just like we do. And there's some, probably some things that we have even similar which would be a good tool for us to get to know them a little better and maybe even lead them to Christ. We have things in common. We don't have to think, oh, I'm Christian, that they're not, and, can't, and stay away from them. No, we need to, we need, we need to try to bring them and, and show them that our God is a loving God. So many people don't know God the way we do, the loving God that we know. Fourth thing is that Love is the only weapon we can use against the real enemy. And it is true. That's the only weapon that works, is love. Look at Jesus' love on the cross for us. That was love. That was pure love. And what did it do? It defeated death. It defeated death. Then the last thing, number five, says, doing good to people who look to harm us is good evangelism. Doing good to people that look to harm us is good evangelism. Thank you, Bill Unger, for those words today. Because I think they're very important. That we do good to people. We, we go out of our way for people who are looking to harm us. We don't hold a grudge. Because we know what happens when we hold a grudge. Bitterness happens. 
and forms wounds. And if we do, if we cannot allow that, we cannot. Because you know what? Our love for him and our love for people has to come above that. We cannot allow wounds to, to, to form through our relationships. Because it is all about relationships. One thing I've learned, it's about relationships. Everything is about relationships. Our first relationship is our relationship with him. If that is good, then that's, we need to also be good here. If we have a problem with relationships with people, then you know what? We need to do something about that. We, we, maybe we need to change. Maybe we need to realize what's, you know, what's going on. Maybe we need to be broken and healed or changed in some way. Relationships are everything. Jesus came here. What did he do? He had relationships with people. He loved people. He healed people. He fed people. He went out of his way for people. Well, no matter what was going on, there was times when Jesus wanted to get away. And he wanted to go pray. But he couldn't because there were so many needs. And what did he do? He had compassion. And he, and, and, and he fed the 5,000. And he fed the 4,000. He fed them. Even though he wanted to get away, he had compassion and he fed them anyways. And he spent and he, he and he, he spent time with them and he gave them a word. Then he got his time away. But he knew what was most important. And it is relationships that are most important. Our relationships are very important. Relationships with him most of all. This is the relationship that's most important. And then with, if this relationship is right, these relationships will also be right. Because you know what? I know we have a speaking God who will lead us to make it right. And we need to be humble and we need to obey and do what he tells us to do. And I've had to do that many times. Humble myself. Shut up sometimes. And make things right. And do what is right, which is to love people. And um, that's what the Lord put on my heart today. So I w I've been in the Word today, and this is what the Lord had put on my heart. So um, I'm just going to say hi to a couple other people that um, that I didn't say hi to earlier. Um, I see you on there, John, Johnny, Johnny Brenz. Good to see you, brother. Uh, Jason Dacey, love you, man. Um, Juanita Rivera, good to see you on there. And um, I think that's um, all I saw. But... Um, I just wanted to share that word. That that's what the Lord had put on my heart today. Um, I know it spoke to me. I hope it's. I hope it spoke to some of you. Um, hi, Rick Rodriguez. Good to see you, brother. And um, I don't want to forget anybody, but um, I just want to say hello to everybody. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Millie, I, I think I said hi to you. Or I don't know if I said hi to you, but um. I can see here Edna Unger had put a message on there. So if you want to know about the women's, um, there is a women's Zoom on Saturday, February 27th at, oh, it's at night at 7 p.m. I'm sorry, it's at night, okay. At 7 p.m., it's for 55 plus, and there is a, there will be, there, there will be the link will be sent. Pastor will send out the, um, a link. <clears throat> This is a seniors Bible study, so this is for the SALT ministry. And this is for anybody, male or female, above 55. So, all right. So, um, it's getting close to 8 o'clock. And um, I, um, like I said, I hope this word spoke to you. I hope um, I see you, Linda. Hi, Linda. Denora. Hello, Denora. And, um, and uh, yeah, also, I want to remind everybody that um, tomorrow night we will be having the men's Zoom. Um, John Eastwood, God bless you too, brother. And um, we will have the men's Zoom, and there's an in-house women's meeting on Friday. And uh, Pastor Rick should be back on Friday. So um, just keep keep praying for him for safe travels on the way home also um, on Friday. So everything goes well. Um, so, um, all right. So that's, I, I hope this word speaks to you. I hope it, um, I know it spoke to me. It speaks volumes to me about just loving we just need, we need to love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our strength. And then we need to love people. And that's it. That is it. That If we follow those laws, and that is the law. That is it. That's all we have to do. 
No matter what we do is to love. And if we do that, you know what? They will see Christ through us. They will see God through us. God will work through us if we do that. So I'm going to pray out. Lord, I just thank you for this word. I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you for who you are, Lord Jesus. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, that, I'm, that we can perform this hard task, which is to love no matter what. Love our enemies. Love those who persecute us. Pray for those who persecute us. Love everybody. Love those who hate us, like the Samaritan. He was loving somebody who hated him. That's a strong word, but that is what, that's how deep the, the, their relationship was. But as we can see, let us be like Christ, who loved no matter what. He loved. He showed love, Lord. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, that we also realize, Lord, how important the law is. How important it is that we put this love, this law of love, above everything else, above our traditions, above our rules, our human-made rules, and the rules of this world, Lord, and the things of this world, Lord. Let us put that love above it. Let us realize that that love is, more, is above all of that, Lord. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, that you will just be with us. I pray for safe travels for uh, Pam and uh, Pastor Rick when they come home on Friday, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus. And I just pray for the meetings um, uh, I, for the meeting tomorrow night, the men's meeting. I pray for Anthony, Lord, who will be speaking, Lord. Let him share his heart, Lord. And I pray, Lord Jesus, for um, Stacy and for the sisterhood meeting on Friday, Lord, and all the ladies. And also for the Salt Ministry Bible study on uh, Saturday, Lord, at 7 p.m., Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you just be with them. Let your spirit be with them. That you just work through it and you teach, Lord, and you show, and you show your heart, Lord. And I also pray for Sunday services, Lord, to the, let, Lord, that you will do what, you, that we will come, and we will worship you, and that you, you will just give us all this safely. We will worship you, and we will be fed by you, Lord. I pray that right now, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Yes. Yes, Anthony, you'll know them by the love for each other, and that's the truth. And I think that the message of love has been going on. And I don't think it's going to end because I think it's what we're called to do. Love each other. No matter. Love each other, but love everybody. Not, you, not even the ones that love us. Love our, even our enemies. That's the challenge. So, God bless you all. And I will see you soon. For the men, I'll see you tomorrow night. For everybody else, I'll see you on Sunday. God bless.